Hello everyone, welcome back to the shop. Today I'm going to be working on a viewer request, uh, which is showing you all how to properly maintain and control a blacksmith's coal forge. Thanks for watching, hope you guys find this video of interest. Okay everyone, real quick. Um, to co properly control a blacksmith's coal forge, you're going to have to understand a few things about the material you're working with, which is the coal. Coal starts as green coal. This is as mined from the mines. Um, so most everybody's forges will start out like this. If you're working with anthracite um, coal, which is a hard coal, it'll be the same way. If you're working with bibutamous coal, it essentially all does the same thing. Uh, I personally prefer bimutamous coal, um, it, which is a soft coal, and anthracite is a hard, a hard coal, or um, not as good as bimutamous. Um, I'm not really up on everything on, you know, their exact, what they're made of. Uh, I'm sure there's probably some information out there, some technical data you guys can find. But... What I know of it is soft coal uh, in generally takes is better for the blacksmith forge um, and heats better. Um, and what I mean by that is from what I have found out is anthracite coal ends up burning hot. It puts off tall flames but not as intense a heat as what bimutamous coal does. So... Uh, that's something to take into effect, you know, so if you got like really tall flames and the fire's spreading a bunch, there are certain ways that you can mitigate that, but that's essentially uh, the difference between the two. Bimutamus will have short, low flames. Anthracite will have tall, bright flames. Uh, that's just the difference. Um, as far as BTU value, the bimutamus will have more uh, BTU an hour. That's what I know of it. Okay, so moving on. So you start with your green coal. Next, as the coal burns, it creates this stuff. As you can see, this is like green coal clumped together, but it's a very light, very flaky. You can just crumble it with very easy finger pressure. This is called breeze, okay? Breeze is what you want to light your coal forge with. After a day of forging, the next day you should have some breeze. And this is like tender for the fire in it on, on a gr green coal forge or just a coal forge. Now, if you're working with a coke forge, the process is completely different. I may do a video on that in the future of how to take them, you know, work with a coke forge. Um, there again, uh, I mainly use green coal and do this whole process. So this is what I'm most knowledgeable at. So... This is breeze, really crumbly. We'll get it out of the way, okay? So as it, so once it goes from breeze, it goes to coke, and this is coke. It's also lightweight, ah, but it's not as easy to break up. It's a lot harder, and then certain instances, I think with like anthracite, it becomes almost hard as a stone, the coke does. Um, so this is what you actually forge in. You don't forge in green coal. That doesn't get a hot fire. You don't forge in breeze. That's the start of the fire. That won't get you a hot fire. You forge in coke. Coke is what gets you those hot forging temperatures, those forge welding temperatures and that whole bit. So that's something to keep in mind. This is what we're after, coke, to forge in. During the process of it converting from breeze to coke, it leaves you with these nasty little buggers that blacksmiths have been dealing with for eons clinker. Uh, there's all sorts of things. I could go into a whole video series on what to do about clinkers and stuff like that, although the video would be just like insanely long. So um, I hope you guys will find this portion informative. Clinker's good for nothing. And this will accumulate down around the air grate. Um, and so this is just a brief overview. You guys will have to let me know in the comment section below if you want me to go over a much deeper and uh, thought out understanding of the actual fire process here. And I may do that when I actually get to my series on forge welding videos because you guys are going to need to know that information 
to be become proficient at forge welding. Um, and I'll, I'll just say this real quick, uh, and this is kind of a pet peeve of mine, um, and we'll move on to the next slide where I actually build the coal forge here. It is a pet peeve of mine, people making it out like Damascus steel or making pattern welded billets is good forge welding. It is not. So I'm just going to make that statement and that's going to shock a lot of people. But that is only literally one type, just one type of forge weld that there ever is. And it's not all that handy to you. The best you can do is make a, a, a billet of steel, a homogenized mass, which you could have started with in the first place. The only benefit of forge welding steel together is it looks pretty in a pattern. That's it. So I just want to give guys encouragement on that, that, you know, like I can teach anybody in about five minutes how to forge weld Damascus. And uh, just to prove it, I'm going to do a video on that eventually. It will probably come after my forge welding series because I think you guys need to understand that, you know, there's certain basics of blacksmithing that if you get proficient at those first, uh, everything else goes much smoother. So that's what I hope to do with this channel, lead guys through processes uh, step by step to make it easier um, for you to obtain those things like making pattern welded knives or tomahawks or whatever you guys' fancy is. Um, I personally do not get into tomahawks or knife making. That's not my thing. I love ornamental ironwork, pretty things. So, but, you know, I understand there's a lot of guys out there that do. So I might even shoot a few videos on that itself in particular. But anyways, so that's enough of that. Clinkers, no good. Don't want them. I'll get that out of the way. I'm sorry for the ramble. We'll move on. I'll go over to the forge and I'm going to show you how to start from green coal to breeze to coke to your clinker. But, well, I won't show you how to make clinkers. That's just going to happen. So, anyways, let's get to it. Okay, we're here at the coal forge. Right now, what I've got going on is I've got a mess. I've got yesterday's fire, I've got all this type of stuff going on here, um, and breeze and whatnot, and I've got a paper towel on, kind of lit on fire, but kind of smothered down here uh, in the bottom of my fire pot. So, if you're starting out completely with green coal, okay, this particular coal that I'm using is what I buy at SOFA, Southern Ohio Forge and Anvil, and it's Pocahontas coal. It's a soft bimutimus coal, but it's in a pelleted form. And I guess the reason why they call it Pocahontas coal is because that's the vein that they're mining and that's where it gets its name. But it's in a it's in a P-shaped form. You can get coal in all sorts of sizes. If it's in big chunks you want to break it down to a size that is about an inch in diameter and uh, work with it that way if it, you're starting completely from scratch with green. So the way this would work is you wad up paper in the bottom of your fire pot. And coal takes a lot of heat, intense heat, to take and get fired up. So, what you would do then, is you would take and get your paper on fire, and increase the airflow to it, and then you would add or smother it with your coal that you're wanting to burn. I just happen to have breeze and stuff here, so I'm going to put it in here to just help out the video. But... The reason why you have to smother the flames and provide airflow to it is so this way you can create a very uh, hot working condition. So you're kind of insulating the fire, if you will. So if you're insulating the fire and you're providing oxygen to the flame, it can develop that hot heat you're looking for. Um, if you're at a club or something, I may want to point this out. You may want to start your draft with a bit of newspaper first. Uh, that way you don't smoke out everybody at the club. But as you can see, I'm starting to get some flame here. And what I'm going to do is, is I'm just going to push all of yesterday's fire back over the top of that and cover it up. And I'm going to keep giving it oxygen. And as you see, it's going to start getting smokier and smokier. And that's what you want to see. Now, this is the steps in starting a coal forge. Um, this will take a little bit, you know, give your guys, guys selves some time. 
Um, I'm good at, I work with coal almost every single day. Uh, I got gas forge as well, but uh, coal forge is my favorite uh, for lots of reasons. Um, but this right here is how I do it. So now it's completely covered. And I want you guys to notice something. Hold on, I'm gonna make sure this is in shot. Okay, right now you can see that this is all white smoke. What's going to happen is, is as the coal catches, and the green coal catches especially, it's going to start turning from this white smoke of the paper burning to a yellow, dirt, to like a yellowish, dirty smoke burning. And that's how you can tell that your coal is caught. So I just keep piling this up here and keep giving it airflow. Um, I'm using a hand crank blower. And as you can tell, I'm not gunning this thing because you can actually blow out the fire by going too fast with it. So I'm just keeping this up and going, letting it build, putting a little more on top, trying to keep it nice and insulated here and keep building it up. You may be asking, okay, well, how do we know when it's okay? to take and go ahead and poke around in here and find out whether we got flame. It's when all this white smoke you're seeing here turns into dirty yellow smoke. If you look onto the right hand side of the fire there guys, you can start seeing some of that dirty yellow smoke like I'm talking about. See it there? Right to the very right hand side of that fire. Okay, so that is what you're looking for there. So once all the smoke that's coming out of the fire starts developing this dirty, tingy color to it, that is what you guys are wanting to see, okay? So it's still going at it. Um, I can start giving it more airflow now because there's sufficient smoke. That tells me that there's sufficient fire underneath to support more airflow. So I'm going to crank a little harder here. Hopefully you guys can hear that. And we're going to start converting more of that white smoke into yellow smoke. You see how it's getting real dirty back in there? It might be hard to see this because the shop door is open. And I might go ahead and close this shop door real quick. There you go, now you guys can see that. That's some dirty smoke right there. That's what we're wanting. I'm also gonna tweak this up a little bit so this way it's, you guys can see it a little better. There we go. Um, so there's that dirty coal smoke I was talking about. So now, we're just gonna poke a hole in it. And then crank a little harder. Always keep your air blast on when you're doing this. Poke around in it a little bit. I just hit the clinker breaker to just make sure that the airways is open. And now you can really see that yellowish tinge going. I'll give this a little higher airflow now, creating more smoke again. And eventually it's going to combust into flames and then you know you got it up and running good. Just like that. Just like I told you. So now you know that you got this thing up and running pretty good. Coal forges take about a good 45 minutes to produce from green coal to coke. They take a good 45 minutes to get a really good forging fire. So in that time I recommend for beginners to take and just maybe uh, while you're waiting for it to get to full potential, do some other things in the shop maybe. If you've got an electric blower, come back and check on it. Uh, if you got a hand crank like me, you may want to start with maybe making some little tiny S-hooks or something. Just something to pass the time while this is getting really good for you to take and go on to your main or your heavy forging for the day. Uh, whatever you may be working on. So, alright. So now you can hear that airflow coming through there. Um, and we've got a pretty good feminine fire going here. Um, this is a little longer tutorial here, guys, on how to do this. Um, 
but essentially I cannot convey enough knowledge to you in five minutes. Um, there's plenty of channels that have a lot of entertainment value. Uh, I'm not one of those channels. Um, you know, my interest is solely on teaching and explaining things correctly because I see so much ignorance going around on the web and I, and I teach so many guys in person uh, new, you know, what is not new to me techniques or what are simple techniques by my estimation um, that they've never learned and they may have been smithing for four or five years and uh, mainly because it's just not talked about because blacksmithing is takes a long time it just does uh, there are no shortcuts to the top uh, nothing beats experience um, you can't read a book and become a master that's just not how that happens you have got to apply yourself and spend the time in the trade and so if I can help cut years of learning curve off your guys' lives that's what I'm into and so I hope that explains a little bit about how long my videos are I know they're kind of tough sometimes to watch through especially if you know, maybe your attention deficit disordered you know or maybe you're just regular deficit disordered you know like I am a lot of times I don't like to watch long videos um, but if I'm learning something new I'll watch a two hour long video uh, because I'm trying to glean as much information from the guy as I can so anyways enough of that ramble I'm gonna move on here so as you can see we've got pretty tall flames here so this is where the controlling of your coal forge is going to come into play. I see far too many guys making this mistake. This is a mistake, having this much flame coming out of the top of your fire. All you are doing is wasting coal. That's it. You need heat on a very small area of whatever bar you are working on. And you need intense heat. You don't need tall flames for that. So I'm going to take the coal swab, my coal swab. I made a video on this. If no one's actually looked at it, I'll put the link at the end of this video for it. But I cool off the edges of my fire because I'm trying to develop a localized heat. A good localized heat. I don't want my flames going all over the place and half baking me to death to create a very hot fire. So I'm gonna cool off off the side of my flames and you can see it's a much smaller fire. And if you notice, I'll try to break it up for you here so you can see, I didn't cool off anything inside that fire pot. That fire pot is still glowing hot. Hopefully you can see that. All I did was kill or quench the flames on the top from spreading too much. This allows you to heat something like a railroad spike, which I'm just so happy in doing for a video for the Hardy Hammer, um, which is making a meat turner um, today while I'm shooting this video. Uh, but now you can take and throw that in there and you can create a nice intense heat. So you can see that. Okay. So the flames still look big on camera, so I'll cool them off a little more because you just don't need them. Proper, fit, proper fire maintenance all comes down to essentially this. Keeping as small a fire as is useful. You are trying to heat the steel. You are not trying to heat yourself. So make as big a fire as is necessary to heat the steel in which you are working and no larger. Anything more is a waste. So, um, second key tip to fire control. Every time I take something out, you can see that's getting hot already. Maybe. Nope, can't see it. Okay. Anyways, uh, that was about a red heat there. Every time you pull something out or put something in, it adjusts and moves the fire around on us. So we need to be very cautious of this. Every time we pull something out, put something in, it moves the fire. So when we put something in, we need to readjust our fire back to create a nice, condensed, localized heat on the material we're trying to work. 
if you do this and you take my advice on this, keep the edges of your fire cool with your coal swab or a dipper can, but be careful with that as I said in the coal swab video. Keep the edges of your fire cool and the center of your fire hot. You will be able to get heats on steel quicker than what somebody can get in a gas forge. Guaranteed. So, um, it, it's, that's one of the huge advantages of working with solid fuel if you can. If you work with gas forges, you're kind of stuck with the gas forge and what you can do with it. Um, like I said, I'm not a huge fan. I do use them for production work. But as far as learning, the basics of blacksmithing, I suggest a coal forge all the way. So, all right, enough talking. So that's my second point. Every time you pull something out, put it back in and adjust it. There you go. You can see how quickly that's glowing. And you know, and I wasn't, it didn't take, you know, 20 minutes for it to heat up like it would have done in a gas forge. Um, so this is one of those benefits to having a nice, compact, tight fire. Proper management. Oh, um, the last point I'll make, and then I'm going to sign off, guys, so you don't have to continue to just watch this fire burn away here uh, and get bored, incredibly bored, for anybody who's still watching this and finding it useful. When you're working in a cold forge, it is not constant. It is not constant. It's always burning down. It's always reducing in flame. What I'll do is, is I'm actually going to go over to the workbench and I'm going to show you in a little drawing so you can understand what the fire is actually doing. I've already shown it can get a piece of steel pretty hot pretty quick as with the tight fire. Let me take you over to the table real quick and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, we're at the table, guys. Um, so I'm going to take a piece of soapstone here and I'm going to try to quickly illustrate this for you guys. So... We have a fire pot here. We have airflow coming up here. Okay? Here's our fire pot. Here's the top of our forge. Hopefully, you guys can see that okay. We'll move you over just a hair because I'm bad at drawing where everything sees. So, in here, you're going to have several levels of things happening. Down here, you're going to have clinkers starting to form that you have to break up and open holes up through so this way you can still get airflow into the fire. Okay? Above that, you should have coke. And I'm going to draw this kind of the crappiest way possible because there's just not a good way of drawing coke. Well, there might be, but I'm not that good at it. This here should always be kept filled up with coke. Your metal comes in right in line here with the top of the forge. You do not stick your metal down into the forge like so. Don't do it. This here is an oxidizing part of the fire. The oxygen from your blower has not been ate up sufficiently in the coke itself in order for it not to scale or burn your steel. Don't stick your metal down into the fire pot. It's an absolute no-no. So, so we got our fire pot. We've got our steel in the center here. Okay, set it on top. So what do we need on top of this? You need more coke to heat it properly. So you need more coke. This is where proper fire maintenance comes from. On top of that will be breeze. I'm just going to draw it with a squiggly line. Okay. And then on top of that, on the sides, will be green coal. If that makes sense. Turning to breeze, turning to coke. So the way that you keep your fire fed, to keep this core area in here fed with coke, is you have to constantly be shuffling coke from the sides of the fire into the fire pot and replacing that coke with breeze and green coal, if that makes sense. So it goes from the center, it goes from coke, breeze, green coal. It goes from breeze, 
from top to bottom. It goes Breeze, Coke, Clinker, if that makes sense to you all. I hope this helps you guys out a lot. Chuck your questions for me down in the comments section. I will do my best to answer those questions. Uh, if there's too many questions for me to answer one-on-one -on -one with guys, I will make a follow-up video doing a Q&A um, on this subject. Because it's very critical for you guys starting out there to understand your fire and your material. It's the basics of all blacksmithing. So anyways, guys, thank you for watching this video. This is where I'm going to leave you. Leave me questions, comments, what you thought of the video, uh, what you guys need help on. Think about that. And I will do my best to get back with you all um, when, you know, I'm not working and uh, I got to and I'm shooting videos. I'll do my best. So anyways, thank you guys for watching. Thank you to all my loyal supporters out there. God bless you all. Have a great day.